Uh, today we're going to create this jungle running game in Figma that is fully playable. And before I start, I just want to shout out the guys who did the artwork. This jungle pack, I'll link it below and you can grab the characters yourself. And I'm going to give this file away for free on my website at schmeltstudios.com. Try to do this under 10 minutes, so let's go. Alright, new frame. I have this pack of... Jumble, I'm going to layer it onto itself, put it in frame, option command G, lame it background, background. Now I'm going to get the tiles here and the character. I'm just going to use the running guy. All right, let's blow all these up. Press K on your keyboard. Let's do two. Make him a little bit bigger. I'm going to put him in here for now. I'm going to option drag to copy this. Command and drag. Well, make sure you're out of K so you can scale it correctly. Command and drag. Command and drag. Let's cut this all down. So here's our floor. I'm going to option drag to duplicate. Grab both of them, shift A, auto layout, command D to duplicate, and that is our floor. Now let's put some obstacles on top. Command drag the same way. This one looks like the biggest one, so I'm gonna grab it first. Great, I'm gonna put this in a frame. So this box will be a frame. Option, command G, and let's name it Obstacle. That's not how you spell that. Obstacle one. And then double click, find another one. Let's go with this guy. We'll shrink it down a little. And put him at the bottom. Crop it. That's obstacle two. And I might speed through this. Okay, so there's our five obstacles. I'm going to make them a component set. Component set. We'll name it obstacles. All right, now I'm going to drag one out, put it on my floor. And then I'll drag another one out and let's change this to obstacle two. And then another one, change it to obstacle three. All right, now we want him to jump up and down. So let's take this one, put it up here, maybe twist it. Like that. So this will be our first run. I'm going to grab this again, option command G to put them all in a frame. We'll just name this track one, duplicate it, command D, butt it up to the other one, grab both, shift A, and let's do different obstacles. So this one, Um, let's do one more track. All right, so here's our track, and that looks pretty cool. I'm going to move that up. We'll call this track. And we have our obstacles. We'll put them up here. Now let's make the track with the background. So I'm going to move this guy out. Grab the background, put it in. Track's a little big, but that's okay. Because I'm just going to shrink it down to fit. K on your keyboard. I'm just going to shrink it down. Command drag to bring it up. I'm going to cut it. Command X. In the background, command V. So now it's in the frame. 
All right. We want to click the content. So now all we can see is what's in the frame. Now we're going to duplicate it. Option drag. And I'm going to scrub it to about halfway. So I'm going to pull it while pressing shift and spacebar. We want it about halfway. So let's go. Let's go here. That's not halfway. Let's go here. Okay. Duplicate it again and go to the very end. All right. Now, these are going to move midway. So if we go to our background here, drag it down, unclip that, and let's grab some of these and twist them. Say, all right. Now clip this back. Put it in and even push them a little bit forward so they move. Now for this one, bring it down so we can see. And I'm going to maybe make this one higher. Make this one higher and twist a little bit. Make this one high, this one, and then this one can come towards him. And that should be good. Clip again. Put it back. Now let's make this background work. Grab all of them. Let's create a component set. Shift E for prototype. We'll drag over to this one. We want it to change after delay of one millisecond. We want it to smart animate, linear, and then as, as much as we can go. So I think it's 10,000. 10,000 is as much as we can do. All right, same thing with this. After delay, smart animate linear, 10,000. And then we want it to repeat itself. So we're gonna bring this one back. And we're gonna say after delay of one and no smart animate, we just want it to happen instantly. So it's looping. All right, so let's play this really quick, make sure it works. Put it in a frame, option command G. I'll name this background and let's play it. I have our spinning elements here. Things are starting to move. Things are going up, spinning. All right, very cool. But some of your variants might need to change because they're all set to default. So we'll just change them so there's no problems. So this one, we want to change to track track one. Well, this one switched to track two. And this one switched to track three. Okay. All right, let's grab this guy now. And we are going to put him in the game. Here. All right, I'm going to put a frame around him. Option, Command, G. While pressing Command and dragging, put it all the way up. And I want this frame to be an auto layout, so... We're going to add an auto layout, just like that. I guess we'll put him back down, put him to the bottom, and let's add a rectangle in here. So this is going to add us our stepping stone, if you will. It's going to make him jump up. So vertically aligned, put this at the bottom. This is how he's going to jump. All right, let's make sure it's in the center. I'm gonna push him all the way up to the top as far as he can go. That's at 291, so we don't want anything more than, we'll say 290. 
All right, remember to 90. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a local variable and I'll delete this one so you can see. We're gonna create one, number, don't worry about these, number, we'll call it jump, and leave the value at zero. Coming back over here, grab your rectangle and we'll name this jump as well. And let's set the height to be jump. So that's gonna set it to zero. All right, now in order for it to be game, we're gonna use the keypads up and down to make him jump up and down. So on this frame here, we're gonna name him runner. What I wanna do is add an interaction. So prototype, we're gonna say keypad, and then on your keypad, press up, the up arrow. And that is going to set the variable jump. Press jump again. And we're going to add, say, 60 pixels every time you press the up arrow. So that's going to make that um, rectangle 60 pixels high. So he should jump 60 pixels every time you press up. Now, at 290, we don't want him to go any higher. So we're going to set a conditional value that says jump. If it's greater than 290, we want to set the variable jump to 290. So it can never go above that. He can't jump any higher than that, otherwise he'll be off the screen and it will be really annoying to get him down. So that's the up. We also want him to jump down. So add another interaction, um, keypad, press the down arrow. And we're going to set the variable jump to jump minus 60. So that means when you press down, he's going to go down 60 pixels. And when he goes to the bottom, jump is less than zero. We want to set the action to set the variable jump to be zero. And the reason we want to do that is he can't go any lower than zero. Otherwise, it's going to hit negative and it's going to be really annoying to get him back. So that should work now. Let's play it. All right, last thing to do will be to get rid of the rectangle color. So his jump color will be at zero. Now let's play. Very cool, it works now. All right, if you guys want this file, head over to schmeltstudios.com. I'm gonna give this one away for free. Um, and if you want more of my files and tutorials, also go to schmelstudios.com and get yourself a studio pass. All right, um, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comment on what I should do next. I'm looking for more videos to create. Thanks, guys.